Welcome to Boschendal. Is it your first time here? Thank you. No, I've been here before to tell you the truth. Okay, well that's a good thing. Then but, I don't know, but I don't know much about it. Okay, I'll uh, tell you, don't worry. Okay. Um, we are now today at Boschendal under this lovely oak tree where all the people um, come and taste wine and they've been coming here for, for many years. This tree is almost 300 years old and over many years people have stopped at this tree, you know, in their old days when they were traveling with their wagons to go somewhere for a rest. Um, this tree also a lot of thirsty people nowadays they come here most of the time to taste the wines from Boschendal Estate. Okay, I've heard that, um, or I read it on your bottles, that Boschendal Estate is like 300 years old. Yes, the, the, the original document showed that in, in 1685 they, they granted this land to a French Huguenot, uh, somebody by the name of Nicolas Lanois. Mm -hmm. The French will say Lanois, but I would just say Lanois. Lanois, and this is, this is one of your wine brands, isn't yes, it? Yes, this is also, yeah, you, exactly. There's the, the blend we have, which is a blend of Cabernet and Merlot. It's normally about 60% Cabernet, 40% Merlot, and that wine is named the Lanois. Okay. And that is named after one of the original owners. Okay, so it was French guys owning the place. Yeah, you know, in the old days, the French used to own everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, they lost it somewhere, I, I don't know. Well, they sold it, actually. Okay. But, the, yeah, the French Huguenots, they were the first people to bring the knowledge of viticulture and winemaking to South Africa. The Dutch were the first people in, uh, in 1659. They, they harvested the first uh, wines already. So, about 16, 1659. On this property? No, no, not on this property. That was okay. in Cape Town. Oh, okay. Then it was only the Dutch and they had a little colony to supply the, you know, the, the ship passing the Cape in those yeah. days. And so in the 2nd of February, 1659, they harvested the first grapes in, in, in the Cape. But as far as I remember, that, that was, those grapes were planted where Cape Town is today. But that is the, the wine industry in South Africa started with the Dutch and the first harvest in 1659 okay. and then but the people it was really the french huguenots that, that brought the knowledge and and more of the the, the know-how of viticulture and winemaking to the cape oh, okay um and how long do you produce wine in this farm well like i said um, they, they planted in the late 1600s they planted the first vines and they, they produced wine i'm not sure if it was good or if it was bad it was they produce grapes. Yeah, they, they, they produce grapes, they put it in something, it ferments, they, they get something that is more or less wine. Um, and then over the, over the next 320 years, um, there was long parts on the farm where we didn't produce wine. And then in the, in the first half of the, of the 1900s, we started producing wines again, but most of it was sold in bulk. <laughs> Um, produced some sherries, some sweet wines, you know, things that were very popular back then. Yeah. And uh, then, actually, from the from the middle to late 70s, so it's uh, the past 40 years, we've been producing wine constantly again as a, as a main focus oh, okay. of our business here. To, t to tell you the truth, you know, um, I had expected someone a bit older than you and to be the winemaker of Boschendal. I mean, you're a young man. And Boschendal is a big name in the industry. Um, how did you get this job? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not. I don't think I'm that young. I just look that young. But still, um, well, I've been I've been in the in the winemaking industry for 11 years now. Okay. So um, I've I've been with Boschendal for four years. So um, although I'm not that old, I I think I have a. Uh, enough and uh, well, really good experience in, in, in the wine producing side. So, uh, thank you for the compliment anyway. Do, do you have a theoretical background? Did you study yeah, winemaking at Stellenbosch University? Yeah, I, at, Stellenbosch, no, no, at Stellenbosch University. I studied winemaking. Uh, I didn't study every day, but I studied, in, uh, I studied enough for them to give me a degree. That's what studying is yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that was in, and then I finished in 2000, mm -hmm. and then in 2001. 2001, first August 2001, I started working with a company in Stellenbosch. Okay. So I worked there for a number of years. Is there other farms we would know that you have worked with? Uh, well, I, I worked I worked for the Stell, which is a big company, yeah. and uh, for the the, the Bath Kelvin. 
Oh, okay. We do just a few of the cup and two oceans in one. Oh, okay. Cool. So now, for how many years? This is now, one, two weeks from now, it will be my fourth harvest, unfortunately. Once the, you know, on a day like today, the grapes, uh, they ripen quickly, so I think, uh, Maybe 10 days from now, you'll see some of the first yeah. gaps uh, arriving. 10, 15 days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, they just talked about it on the radio. Um, people looking at this now, they don't feel the heat. But today we go close to 40 degrees here, don't we? Yeah, I think yesterday it was 40 degrees on the farm, just on, o over the road. Yeah. We will go to it later on. So, um, yeah, I think people are just happy because for the past previous week we've had some rain and we've had some yeah, all right weather, but not really summer weather. Okay. So I think a lot of people are just happy that the sun is shining, the wind's not blowing. Okay, cool. Having a lovely summer day. For us, it's getting too hot now. No, for me, it's also too hot. I would never. I would like to have it sort of 29, 31 every day. But like all of us. But yeah. we're gonna move to the cellar soon, so it's yeah. gonna be cooler there. The cellar it's a lot cooler, so don't worry about that. So, um, is there anything special, typical about Boschendal that makes Boschendal different to all the other wine farms of your experience now in four years time, in four years time. I think what to, really at, at Boschendal we, we used to have um, almost 500 hectares of, of vineyard and now it, it's a lot less. We, I think it's about 125, 130 hectares under vineyard, which means be, because on the farm we've had a lot of experience. All the people from the vineyards have been 10, 15, 20 years and uh, They've, they've seen, okay, the, the Cabernet Sauvignon or the Shiraz or the Sauvignon Blanc, it's only good in these areas. So what we now have left on the farm is only really the best sites for the best the varieties. And to, to, to um, ensure that we still have enough production, we went into Stellenbosch area, we went into Elgin, we buy from one or two different areas in the Achter Arrow as well. And from those places now, we, we go and we work with three sort of major farmers and we also from some smaller farmers and we buy selected vineyards. Okay. So I think, well, although Boschendal is not the only people that's doing that, um, I think the way we've been doing it really gives us an, an advantage that we we just we just have the fruit that we 100% want to have. So there's nothing we get into the cellar that we're not happy with. So okay. the, the, the focus in, in the vineyards, like, all wine making is important, or the most important, to making sure that the grapes we have, and I think the grapes we have, are really good from that perspective, so that we, we have quality um, all across the board. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and is there, is, there, is there a description of the um, style of wine making I think that you do? Is there, how, how, is your, how would you describe your general style? I think on the, on, on the red wines, we would normally call it um, sort of for me, a varietal fruit and, and elegance and balance. I think elegance and balance are maybe the two words that, that we'll focus on used describing the red wine. Okay. Because, you know, it's a, we, we can try to, to make those really big and powerful red wines, and I'm sure we can make them. But for me, it's just, that's, that's, not, that's not attractive in a wine. Uh, you know, I would rather take a wine that uh, I always describe as a bit more feminine. So definitely on the red wine, you know, those wines that are uh, a bit more nuanced, a, a bit more layered, that have a little bit more complexity, and uh, and that's a bit more interesting. Though, and always balanced. Those would be the red wines. And uh, on the white wines, where Sauvignon Blanc is our big variety, there we, um, we've always done things a little bit different. We've never produced those green souvenirs. So for our, us, our trademark souvenir, it's a, a touch more, a touch on the riper side. We, it will always be souvenir, so we'll always have those green flavors, but our characteristic has always been um, nice big mouthfeel, a little bit riper, the fruit combining, adding onto those green, just like an, another layer of, you know, tropical fruit of, of different flavors. To, to, to add an, an additional layer and more complexity to, uh, to our Sauvignon Blanc. And on the reserve wine, on the Sauvignon Blanc, we, our trademark has always been length and minerality. Okay. Okay, today here we are in the vineyards, in Block Mountain Vineyards 10. It will say MV10 on the side, it's Mountain Vineyards. And well, if you look around, you have mountain and you have vineyards, so it's actually quite understandable why you call it mountain vineyards. Um, this is a block of Shiraz and uh, 
This is now the first week in January. Normally we would harvest this block in about eight weeks from now. And uh, it's around this time of the year that the process happens, which we call, well, Deerslan in Afrikaans, and the French term for it is Veraison. Because if you can have a look over here, you'll see even red grapes like Shiraz, if it's red like Shiraz or white like Chardonnay, in the beginning, they all look green. But then, after a time, um, the, the, there's a change. That, well, there's various changes in, in the vineyards. Um, and you will see the vineyards and the, the vines will start to become red. I'll just, I'll just find some in here. And then they'll start to look like this. Now, um, ideally, you would like all of them to go through this process at more or less the same time. Um, but this is just an indication of which part of the growing cycle we are in at the moment. So we are now in, in, in the process of, of Verizon. Um, and all of this should be done in the next uh, a week or two. And everything should be dark. And then, and then now it's still quite acidic. Um, you go, oh. ah. Now if you bite on it, it's almost just acid. And then in the next eight weeks until the harvest, eight or ten weeks, how long it might take, those acid, the acid will reduce and the sunlight like we have today will help the leaves to form sugar and, and the plant will produce sugar and when I bite onto this a couple of weeks from now I will say mm, nice and sweet and the flesh will be good and tasty and then I will know the grapes is right they're good for picking but today this is not good for picking <laughs>